Hi, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Steve Harney. I'm the founder of KCM, and I'm inviting you to this Monday morning's deep dive. Before we get started on this deep dive, which is a side hustle for millennials and Gen Zers um, in regarding real estate, I'd like to make a special announcement that next Monday morning for the deep dive, we're going to have a very special guest host, someone who I've worked with the business for 25 years, someone who's dedicated to helping every American family that wants to attain the dream of home ownership. And um, Jamie Gonzalez and Dorvo, who I'm about to introduce, will be with you next week, and I'll let her explain to you exactly what she'll be covering. Go ahead, Jamie. Good morning, Steve. Well, as we know, affordability is a big issue right now for uh, home buyers. So next week, we're going to be talking about down payment and down payment assistance and why it's important this year. As uh, it was mentioned this weekend, uh, one of three buyers can benefit from uh, from down payment assistance. So we want to help those buyers to be able to afford a home next year. So uh, that's what we're going to cover next week. All right. Thank you very much, Jamie. We're really looking forward to it because I know you've dedicated a good portion of your life to helping people, especially to people that might have a little bit more of a challenge getting a home from a affordability issue. And you've done a lot of research on that. I've seen some of that research. And ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be very, very special next week. Thank you, Jamie. Appreciate it a lot. And we'll all see you next week. Looking forward to it. We'll see you next week. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So now let's get started with this week's deep dive. And as I mentioned before, uh, this week we're going to do real estate, the ultimate side hustle for millennials and Gen Z. A lot of interesting information. When I did, this first came to our desk, I was saying, wait a second, a side hustle in real estate? That doesn't even make any sense to me. But after looking at the research, I realized, you know what? There are people out there, not for everyone, but there are people out there that could really benefit from this information. So we wanted to share it with you. Again, what we're trying to do, ladies and gentlemen, is look at different ways that people can get involved in home ownership. And, you know, with the affordability issues that we have right now, some of that we'll cover right in this particular half hour that we're about to spend together. And a lot of it's going to be covered next week also from a different standpoint. Uh, Jamie's going to cover the down payment assistance programs, the unused power that could help. All right, because there's a lot of opportunities for a lot of different groups of people to help with the down payment and other costs in regard to getting into their first home. And again, Jamie's going to cover that next week. And every week, what we're trying to do is we, we try to really help agents. Because most agents know what's happening. Good agents understand what's happening. The whole purpose of the deep dive is to make sure that you have enough good information that you can explain what's happening. So again, let's jump in. Real estate, the ultimate side hustle of millennials and Gen Z. And again, ladies and gentlemen, when this first came to my desk, I was like, really? This is a topic we're going to cover? But as more and more research came to my desk on it, I was like, this is really amazing. I didn't realize, you know, being an older boomer, I didn't realize how much they, that the young people are hustling and doing things. Now, I have three sons that are all millennials. I know they hustle. I know that they work hard. Uh the, but it was shocking to me how many of Gen Z's and millennials work hard and work hard in the real estate side of the thing um, in regard to side hustles to make some extra money or to better be able to afford a house. It's almost like a housing hack. So let's start with bank rate, what they said. is Gen Z copes with lower earnings, costlier goods, and student loan debt, many have opted to stop renting and live with family in order to boost their savings. 30% of Gen Z home buyers move directly from their family member's home to a home of their own, according to NAR. A substantial portion of this generation, 53%, are also working a side hustle to help them with earnings and savings, according to Bankrate's side hustle survey. So what are we saying? What we're saying is that Gen Z uh, is jumping in, staying with their parents a little bit longer to save more money, and also doing other things in order to get cash available for that down payment, closing costs, and everything as they move forward to purchase. Home ownership is the goal, and they're trying to figure out ways to make money in order to accomplish that goal. Now, here's something that kind of blew my mind. Nearly two in five U.S. adults have a side hustle. 39% of Americans have a side hustle right now. 
that number was much higher than I thought it might be. And when we look at Gen Zs and millennials, over 50% of all Gen Zs and millennials have some side of some type of side hustle. Now, sometimes when we think about side hustle, we think about, well, maybe, you know, they're going to be an Uber driver or an Uber Eats driver. And one of my sons has done that in the past. All right, there's a good side hustle. He made some good extra money. But that's what you kind of think about. Someone who's like kind of starting out and, and trying just to make ends meet. But the interesting thing is the gap between annual income brackets is smaller than other demographic comparisons. But generally, those with a household income over 100000 are most likely to have a side hustle. That was something else that shocked me. Like I said, I have one son. He's not at that, that prime earning age where he's got everything put together. He's in the process of doing that. So he's always hustling on the side to make some extra money. But here it is, and that's why I thought most people were side hustling. But here it is. 45% of uh, people that make over $100,000 a year have a side hustle. Between uh, people making between 80 and 100, 35%. So what we can see is a lot of people have side hustles, and a lot of people with money, with income, have a side hustle. And both of those things shock me to a degree. Now, side hustles have become more common, but like so many things in the inflationary environment, people are working hard, but not necessarily getting ahead. Side hustles are much more likely to view this extra income as essential rather than a passion product or a way to get ahead financially. So again, what are they saying? A passion product project. Homeownership is a passion, passion pro, um, um, project. What they're trying to do is figure out how can I do a side hustle? Got to pay my bills. Got to keep my credit up if I'm going to buy a house. But I also, what can I do in order to make that extra money and work it hard so I can put some money away so I can go ahead and do what I wanted to do and that was purchase a home. So why real estate side hustles are useful? All right. Real estate... Uh, side hustles can be important for generating extra cash for several reasons. Number one, additional income. Real estate side hustle provide an opportunity to supplement your primary income source. Number two, flexibility. Many real estate, and we'll talk about the side hustles in a second, many real estate side hustles offer flexibility in terms of time commitment and scheduling. Diversification of income. Having multiple streams of income is beneficial for financial stability and security. Capitalizing on real estate opportunities. The real estate industry presents various opportunities to make money. Leveraging existing assets and skills. Real estate side hustles often leverage assets you already have, such as your own home skills or expertise. Potential for long-term growth. Real estate side hustles can serve as a stepping stone towards a full-time real estate career or a source of passive income in the future. And ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at someone that did just that. I had a good job when I first started in real estate. I had a job my family thought was like the job to have. It had a little nepotism, major, major corporation up in New York. And I had a pretty good job there. I just hated the job. So I started selling real estate on the weekends. And you started getting really involved in it and really enjoyed the whole process of helping somebody, you know, find their dream house. That was really important to me as much as the money was. And all of a sudden, I was really loving the real estate part of it, and it got to the point that the real estate part of it was making me more money than my full-time job. And then I made that switch. I left my full-time job, and my family drove me crazy about doing that. To jump into real estate, the best thing that ever happened to me. Best thing that ever happened to me. Now, I'm not saying it's the right thing for everybody. I'm not saying that every Gen Z person and every millennial you talk about is going to be interested in a career in real estate. But the second half of that, passive income. If they get involved in purchasing homes or investing in homes or flipping homes, what will wind up taking place is they'll make money. If they're making money, they can put that money away in investments, either instead of flipping the house, keeping the house, and collecting the rent. There's a lot of opportunities here, and there are people, young people, Americans, Gen Z and millennials that are looking for those type of opportunities. And I think we should introduce them. Let's talk about six smart ways uh, to invest in real estate. Number one, obviously, is to buy a house. The simplest type of real estate investment involves buying your own home. All right. And there's no question about that. 
All right. Uh, invest in, in, but right now, some people might not be able to do it just right now. Affordability is at an all time record low. All right. That the last time it was this difficult to buy a house was in the early 1980s. I know how difficult it was then. That's when I bought my first house. So I feel for the people that are looking to buy their first house right now. Invest in rental properties. Rental properties offer several investment options. You can buy a single family home and rent it as a residence or vacation home. You can offer short-term rentals such as an Airbnb, or you can purchase a multifamily home and rent it to different tenants. Some of the people, and remember, people with side hustles, some of them have over $100,000 in income. They can go ahead right now and maybe purchase a duplex. They might even decide to move into one half of it and rent the other half out. So they're still making rental income. Or they could use it as an Airbnb. And when I was thinking side hustles, I was thinking millennials, I wasn't even thinking in my own family. One of my other sons who coaches basketball at Harvard, he lives up in Cambridge outside of Boston where Harvard is. But a couple of years ago, he bought a house up in Maine. It was his vacation home. He went to his getaway house. It's up near a ski lodge there and it's in the middle of the woods and it's a, a, an A-frame, you know, real main A-frame type of house. And it's a beautiful, beautiful home. But then when he realized he wasn't spending a lot of time there, he started Airbnb in it. And he makes good money every year. And it didn't even dawn on me that to him, that's a side hustle. Let's see how many other people like my son are willing to do something like that. House flipping. House flipping is a common investment strategy. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in depth in a, se in depth in a second. House hacking. House hacking involves modifying owner-occupied properties to make them suitable for multiple tenants. Examples include converting basements and garages and adding ADUs. Now, we did a whole deep dive a couple of weeks ago. You can look on the, our YouTube channel, the Keeping Current Matters YouTube channel, and looked it up. And we talk about ADUs, additional dwelling units or accessory dwelling units. That's a big thing right now in a lot of parts of the country. And young people can, with their parents' house, with a friend's house, say, let's work on this. Let's put an ADU. I'll do some of the work. I'll handle the tenant in the situation. And I'll make some money with that. Fractional ownership. Fractional ownership can be applied to rental properties and commercial properties. Jump in. Buy a piece of a project. A piece of a development. And private notes. If they do have cash available, another investment strategy involves becoming a private lender for a real estate investor. You will make money off the interest. Now, very obviously, you're going to have to get you know, good people, an attorney and a good financial planner there to make sure the paperwork is all done right and that you have collateral against the loan. Right? But that's another way to make money in real estate. Especially right now, because what are people looking for? A cheaper more an interest rate. You could go ahead and charge six and a half percent on the loan, and they would absolutely love you. And another thing that's taking place right now, people are identifying where the assumable loans are, where they can go and take an assumable loan. The challenge with taking over someone else's loan in a lower payment is that that person has built equity in their home. So the buyer that's assuming that loan, has to come in with cash. If that buyer doesn't have cash, maybe they're coming to you, coming to that Gen Z or, or millennial buyer that has some cash, and they're taking a second mortgage out with you for some period of time. There's so many opportunities right now that I didn't even think of until these... Um, situations were put on my desk. I'm saying, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I've already been talking to some of my children's friends saying, hey, listen, did you ever think about this? Or did you ever think about that? And I was amazed at how many were already starting to do things like that. So let's not turn a, you know, a dark eye to that. As a matter of fact, I just took this you know, from CNBC. A 32-year-old turned an Airbnb rental into a $205,000 a year side hustle. Here's a large part of what made it successful. That's I'm just giving you an article that appeared in CNBC to validate that, yes, people are doing that. My son, as I told you, one of my sons is doing it. He's not making $205,000 a year, 
but he's making a pretty penny every year with his Airbnb. How many other people, if we're given the opportunity, would jump at that? And what do we know might be selling right now? Some people that were jumping into an Airbnb, you know, they bought that second home thinking that they were going to spend their time there and spend the summers there. And now the cost of that second home is starting to weigh on them. And they're saying, you know what? I think I'm going to sell it. And that second home, whether it be on the lake, whether it be up in the mountains, might be a perfect Airbnb. Keep on going. Anyone who's had work done knows how difficult it is to get contracted sometimes to commit to certain timelines and certain costs. So that is discouraging people as well. What this means right now is that people in general are backing away from buying these homes that are looking for more and are looking for more of a turnkey home experience. Now, anyone in the real estate business already knows this. All right. They, they, they know this, that millennials, the younger buyer really wants a turnkey. Usually, if it's a couple, both of them are, have uh, good jobs, they have good educations, and they really don't want to necessarily roll up their sleeves and get to work. And that's why we have an excessive inventory that needs to be remodeled, you know, an excessive inventory that needs to be um, modernized, all right? It, everything is outdated in the house. Well, that seller is going to sell that house for less money. Because the normal buyer is not going to buy it because, they again, they want that turnkey operation. But that gives an opportunity to someone who's not afraid of a little work to jump in there, buy that house at a less of a price. We're talking about the flipping again. Go in there, modernize the house, make it look nicer, put a fresh coat of paint on it, mow the lawn, clean it up, and make some money. So that, that stock of inventory that we have that I've been saying for the last couple of weeks, we have to lower the price, we have to lower the price, we have to lower the price, because no one's going to buy it. If you have a house that's on the market for 90, 120 days in this market, that means it's not sellable to today's buyer. We have to get that price right. And when we get that price right, some people will argue, well, there still won't be anybody because, it, you know, the kitchen's like a 1970s olive green stove. Well, maybe at the right price, somebody's coming in there, putting some money in, fixing it up, putting in a little elbow grease, what we used to call sweat equity into it, and making it a really nice house that a normal millennial buyer, that two job, I want a turnkey operation, would be happy to own. Let's work on the inventory we currently have. Percent of buyers... Second percent of buyers who find it very or extremely important to have the opportunity to rent out part of their home for extra income while living in it. This was another shocker to me, ladies and gentlemen. This is from the latest Zillow report out a couple of days ago. 55% of millennials want to buy a house that they can rent out part of the house. They're thinking money right from the beginning. And what do we know? If again, if you go to um, our um, YouTube page and look up the uh, deep dive we did a couple of weeks ago at ADUs, we talk about all the financing that's available now. The, now you could buy a two-family house with only 5% down and they count the rental income from the second unit towards your qualification. Now, we talked a lot about that on multi-generational uh, homes. That's what that 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 particular uh, deep dive was about, multi-generational, that that would be perfect for that. It's also great for side hustle. And listen, if you can't get into the market right now and get the perfect house, maybe you get a really nice house that has an apartment, a really nice two-family house, and rent the other half out. And now we're finding out that that's exactly what millennials and Gen Zs want to do. Not necessarily all buyers want to do that, but young buyers are smart enough to do that. Percentage of buyers who express interest in renting a portion of the home for additional income while resigning in it. All right, so now this is the people. Um, this is the same situation, all right, but broken down by Latinos, Blacks, and Whites. And we can see in the Latino population, they very much want to do that. They understand that. Let me go ahead and save money on the mortgage by having a rental situation. And then later on, 
as they're paying the mortgage off, that rent keeps on coming in. And then maybe even their parents move in. There's a combination. So what we can see in the Latino and the black market, the black housing, they, we, we have a different situation. Or the black home buyer, I should say. I spoke incorrectly there. But the Latino and black home buyers, they have even more of a desire to get that done. And the percentage of buyers who say it's highly important to be able to rent out the entire home in the future. The entire home in the future. So what are we hearing here? That millennials and Gen Z, not only do they want to make rental income while they're living in the house, they want to buy a house that when they leave the house, they can still rent it out. They're thinking like investors very early on. Now, I'm not saying every one of them is going to even want to be an investor when the time comes. Being a landlord is not easy. Sometimes it seems easy, but it's not. We all know that because we're in the business. But there will be a certain percentage. But more importantly, they see the financial advantages of home ownership. Even past when they move out of that particular home. For those first-time buyers navigating the side hustle culture, where a regular nine-to-five might not quite cut it for home ownership dreams, rental income can step in to help with mortgage qualification and smoothing out those monthly payments. Again, that's from the Zillow report. And what the Zillow report brought out, exactly what we're saying right now. What is taking place in a very, in a very big way is younger generations, the Gen Z millennials, are really looking at their home as an investment, not just as an investment to gain equity, to have one net worth when they retire. They're looking at how to make money right now with it. Let's help those people accomplish those goals. It's an answer to affordability. Have a rental income coming in, makes the house more affordable. They will even now count, in many cases, that rental income coming in. It makes you able to qualify for the, the mortgage right from the beginning. Let's take a look at some of these different ways that young people are making and investing money in real estate in order to have a better financial future. Well, that's what we had covered today, ladies and gentlemen. Just remember, in a real talk, and I want everyone to know, if you're a member at the, at the level that you have real talk, please, ladies and gentlemen, we're having tremendous success from agents who are making videos and putting them out on social media. Video is the answer right now. Content is the answer right now. Making great content is what proves you to be the neighborhood expert. That's what enables people to say, this person knows what they're talking about. Of course, they're constantly on any one of the social media networks explaining to me what's happening in real estate. And what we try to do is get one real talk, and there's several, you can look up, there's a bank of them that you can do. But we try to take a look at one real talk that really aligns with what we just said. Because if you do a video, people might ask you questions. And we want to do it at the same time that you have the answers right in front of you. This week's is Invest in Real Estate as a Side Hustle. Uh, record this video to talk about real estate as an option for a side hustle for your clients to make additional income. We've already gone through at length, for over 20 minutes, what they can do as far as the side hustle. Now it's up to you to make a video to let them know that you have some of the answers to some of the questions they have, and you have some of the answers to some of the goals they have and how to accomplish those goals. We get the videos out. That's crucially important. Now, again, what you've heard over and over again over the last couple of deep dives, some way, somehow, we're bringing the affordability issue in. We can't force interest rates down, mortgage rates down. We can't do that. We can't force prices down. That's determined by the homeowner. Now, it appears that mortgage rates are starting to moderate. It appears that appreciation is starting to level off to much more normal appreciation, not the runaway appreciation we had in the last three years. So little by little, affordability, wages are going up. Little by little, affordability is getting better. But we know there's a ton of people out there that still have a, a, an issue buying their first house because of the affordability crisis. And that's why next week, every week, we're touching on it just like we did this week. We have an affordability issue. 
go go ahead and start flipping houses. Get some extra money there. You have an affordability issue, buy a house that you can rent out part of the house. It's a house hack, plus you're making money, plus you better qualify, plus it's easier to make the mortgage payment. Or everything we're doing is leaning toward an affordability. And next week, we're going to go directly at it. Jamie Gonzalez, the Atlas and Drovo has pretty much, I've known her for 25 years, she's dedicated her life to helping people, especially the people that find it the most difficult, that are always pushing up against an affordability issue. How can she help those people get their, the American dream, a house of their own, a house for their family? She's dedicated her life to that. And she has all sorts of resources that you should know about and you should be talking about to help a lot of young couples that don't think they can afford to buy a house because they don't have the down payment or they don't have the closing costs or they don't understand what's available to them. From the federal to the state, special, there's special down payment assistance programs for teachers, for firemen, for nurses. Jamie breaks down every one of those things next week. Make sure you're there. All right? If you're really an agent that's worrying about the families and worrying about the affordability issue, that's a deep dive you can't miss. I think it's so important, I'm putting our specialist on it instead of me. I don't want to blow it. Well, as we say each week, ladies and gentlemen, you gave me a half hour of your life. I hope I gave you a good return on your investment. See you next week. Well, actually, I won't see you next week. You'll see Jamie next week. You'll be impressed. You'll be informed. And you'll go out armed to help a whole bunch of people. And, and that's what this is all about.